field off of turn number four. Pace car heads for pit road. Denny Hamlin and Carl Edwards on the front row. Crowd rising and cheering, and the Brickyard 400 is underway in Indianapolis. hanging tough in that outside lane through the first couple of corners. He's to the left as you look at it. Denny Hamlin to his inside to turn three for the lead. Yeah, Hamlin was glad to get a little bit of push from his teammate there. Paul Edwards showing a lot of power in the hood of that Ford right now. Hamlin will get clear. Place, Jimmy Johnson by Joey Logano. Here's Greg Bimple in the 16 to try and get a spot on the yellow car of Logano. Be on the front side of the Pagoda and Jason will be on the back. Is that correct? In four, that's correct. Yeah, one thing we just had to be kind of clear today because I'm not too familiar with your voice or Chad's voice on the radio. Just to make sure I know who's talking, you know. Copy that. Just one of the challenges that you have here at Indianapolis. The track is so big, they use multiple spotters. Most teams do. And of course, remember Carl working with a new crew chief, Chad Norris, as well. But Chad told me before the race, Carl's been great all week. He spent extra time with him so they could make sure they're on the same page communication-wise today. Caution free in the early going. Mike Bliss has gone back behind the wall in the 19 car. The other 42 are on the lead lap. Now, as your gauges look OK? Yeah, gauges are good. I'm going to run one more lap. Anything I can do? Well, there you hear and see Carl Edwards off the pace in the 99 car. Had just lost the third. The battery down by you. Had just lost third place to Kyle Busch, and now he's slowing down. Now, what a horrible feeling as a driver. You get so excited and up and prepared for this. They had a strong qualifying effort in something like this early in the race. I heard a loud pop. Coming to you. Let's flip the hood, okay? See, he's not really even got the throttle down much. Feel like fuel or anything, Carl, or did you definitely think it's something else? Uh, it's a valve spring or, uh, or a plug wire to burn it up or something like that, okay? It's one cylinder at least. Yeah, he's just trying to baby it back to the uh, pit here. Not the way that Carl wanted his Indianapolis to unfold, and certainly not for Chad Norris. In his first race, as Carl's crew chief talked about, and we saw in our opening all the work that goes into preparing your best piece to take a shot at winning on this so demanding She's our track. Here. We got to keep all the points we can get. She's our yeah, still got to stay focused. You heard right there, Carl say, "Hey, we got to get all the points we can. Just figure it out. If we can fix it. Let's fix it." Caution flag is out for the first time at Indianapolis. Travis Quapple's machine, those sparks are not normal. And they're not good. Yeah, let's go to the garage with it. Right front down. Pretty hard lick on the right side. The question is, which came first, the right front down or the hit on the right side? Yeah, he probably had to think that maybe he could have gotten into something and, and either ran over something or, or cut that right front tire. You would have to think that. Oh, yeah, that right front yeah. let go. That could have been from over, overuse of the brakes or just running over something on the track. These good years are pretty durable, so they're not just going to give up that quickly. Yeah, the tire wear has been extremely good since they've gone to this new, new style compound. Haven't seen any issues there. So off the pit lane, remember we saw Kyle Busch who came out across that scoring line just behind Denny Hamlin and Jimmy Johnson. But because he didn't maintain speed, where he come and came up to speed and fell in line is back there. Kyle's going to restart in 13th position. Free pass, 83 car landed Castle. Five cars took a wave around to get on the lead lap. Give you those in a moment. First, let's watch this restart.
out of the group as Johnson goes for the lead. Denny Hamlin still trying to get his car back down to the bottom side of the racetrack. I would have to say that he probably just didn't get those left sides cleaned off very good before that restart as he drove off into turn one. Got that spot. It looks like trouble now. Oh, Clint Boyer. Boyer. Caution is out. Contact at the left hard. rear. Just coming off a four, just coming off a four. Clint Boyer, 27th at the time. That intense action you saw after the restart in the pack. And obviously he got the worst of the shuffle and jockey. behind the left rear. The is actually up a little bit. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Clint trying to take care of that left front fender. Left quarter down. Left front's flat. You can see the steering wheel shaking. There's Boyer right in the screen of the 15. There's where the damage came in the left front fender. help for Matt Kenseth in the 17. Got a huge push right there to go by Jeff Gordon. But Kenseth not able to finish the pass. Gordon able to defend. There's Casey Kane in the five inside of Kurt Busch in the 51. Casey Kane, somebody else will have to watch throughout this day. Seems to be on a march. Get himself up inside that top 10 as he's done now. At the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Brickyard 400 telecast presented by Golden Corral is under caution for just the third time in the race. Casey Mears with that damage on the right side of his 13 car. Yeah, you can see somehow he had a problem getting through the corner. Don't know what it was. Doesn't really look like a blown tire. It looked like he had some kind of problem, though, and got out of the groove up against the wall. Running in 30th place at the time, and you see that Casey has taken that car back behind the wall. Oh, Keslowski loose under Smith. Johnson goes by him, side by side with Smith for the lead. Gather back up. See Kyle Busch make a huge move too to get all the way to third. Oh. 
A frantic first lap after the restart. Jimmy Johnson to the lead. Kyle Busch to second. Jeff Gordon to third. And remember earlier in the race when Denny Hamlin had a slide on a restart when he was contending for the lead? It's taken him a long time to get back into contention. Yeah, but he's there now, Alan, and I think starting ninth on the inside, as you pointed out earlier on this restart, was a big help there. We're under the yellow flag at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Jeff Burton has had some problems. He left front down on that 31 car and then in driving it back around to the pit area. Further damage. It doesn't look too bad right here. It looks like he just lost left front, going to get into the pits, but it's done some more damage. We're going to have to spend some time repairing it. He was in 16th place at the time. having to block now he knows that could cost him some spot from these guys coming from behind he's blocking Earnhardt Jr. You can tell just how much Kyle Busch knew getting in front of Jimmy Johnson was going to give him a shot at winning this race he was doing everything he could Trevor Bain with Regan Smith up under the back bumper 78-21 well Matt Kenseth really struggling back there Like Matt Kenseth the Tony Stewart made contact when they were side by side on the back straightaway. I'm not sure that didn't hurt Matt's car. Oh, Joey Logano in trouble. Turn one. And here we go. In the wall, guys. In the wall. Matt Kenseth just talked about how he was struggling in some of the heavy racing since the restart. And now the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship leaders got fire coming from under his car. Fortunately, Matt's out. Joey Logano had been up in the top five earlier and lost a pile of positions on a pit stop that set him back in the pack a couple of stops ago. Got a lot more problems than that now. Well, you're right, there was gonna be another restart. It's almost inevitable, everybody was pushing and shoving there. Well, it's just that time, you're trying to get everything that you can. One of your biggest races of the year. Matt's certainly not happy, and who can blame him? Yeah, I know. That's a tough end. Yeah, I don't know if it was. I don't know if you had a tire going down. You talked about that contact between he and Tony Stewart, or if it just maybe pushed a fender in, and then that created it, got him back in more traffic, and that certainly may have been even more the issue. See, Logano just got down in there, tried to get it really low, got loose, and the problem started more from there. It looked like Kenseth had the right line to avoid it. Then when Bobby Labonte made contact with Logano, it pushed him back up the up the track. Nowhere to go for Matt. All right, Matt Kenseth coming out of the care center. Matt, it looked like you just about had that thing cleared. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't count. <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, disappointing. End of the day, we didn't um, run particularly well and just kept losing positions. It kept being on the outside and restarts. And then uh, the farther you got back, the uh, dumber people drove and just kind of got got us in some bad spots. So I, uh, I should have better restarts. And then there we just got ourselves. Uh, you know, too far behind. We didn't have a real good car anyway, but we had a better car than, than where we were there then. Momentum wise, what are your thoughts on the point? You came in here as the points leader. Obviously, you will not leave here as, as the leader. Yeah, you know, you run run as hard as you can every week. You try to try to be smart. You try to try to race hard, pick your battles, um, get the best finish you can every week, and the points kind of take care of themselves. So I'm more worried about, uh, you know, um, getting this behind us, try to go next week, and, you know, try to try to go out and get a win. Right, thank you very much, Matt. Matt uh, Kenseth, okay, but uh, wanting to build some momentum for the chase, guys.